Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am the introverted reader and as promised, this is my October wrap up. Um, as you guys know, I participated in the Magical Hobbathon hosted by Rachel over Rachel Saris. It was a lot of fun, it was magical. I was supposed to go to Disneyland last year, but obviously it didn't happen, but sure I may as well do a readathon based on it. And yeah, Rachel did such a good job putting all of this together. So yes, thanks Rachel. <laughs> it was a bunch of fun. Um, yeah, so uh, go and subscribe to Rachel because um, she's lovely. Anyway, I somehow managed to read six books in October. Um, it wasn't the greatest month for me, just personally. Um, a lot of <laughs> really, really not so good stuff um, happened this month. And a lot of times I just didn't feel like reading, but I somehow managed to complete six books, five of which were on my Hopathon TBR. So without further ado, let's hydrate and get to it, shall we? Okay, so first and foremost, I want to say that the first book I completed was actually not on my Hopathon TBR. It was Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Shackerbordy. This was, this was on my TBR for September, but I, <laughs> I didn't manage to get it finished in September um, for my own readathon. So I finished it in October and it was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Five glowing stars to this book. If you haven't read the Dave Abad trilogy yet, I highly, highly recommend. And spoiler alert for my TBR <laughs> for November, I am 100,000% carrying on with Empire of Gold. I'm reading it this month. I don't care um, what else is gonna happen in November, but Empire of Gold is being read because the ending of this one floored me like read the David Bad trilogy I'm begging you anyway so the Hopathon books let's talk about them well actually let's hydrate again first okay Ugh, okay so my first read for um the Hopathon was A Tale of Witchcraft by Chris Colfer this was my park entrance read into the Magic Kingdom and the prompt for that was to read a fantasy book and you guys know literally all I read is fantasy. So um, this is a fun little middle grade series uh, by Chris Colfer, obviously. And it's basically about this young girl called um, Bryce and she discovers that not only has she got magic, but she is a fairy <laughs> and she goes to fairy school. This one obviously is a little bit more on the witchy side, which was fitting for October. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's a whole lot of fun. It's quite a big book, but the font is really big so it didn't take me that long so four stars for this one and super excited to carry on to book two and these three right here were my reads for the magic kingdom so first and foremost for my attraction read which was haunted mansion and that was to read a spooky book i read as good as dead that rhymed by holly jackson <laughs> This is the third and final book to her A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and this series you guys, this series is wonderful. Like this book had me hooked from beginning all the way to the end. It was intense, it was like scary, like edge of my seat. Um, trigger warnings for anxiety, anxiety attacks, PTSD, um, drug use. Um, descriptions of dead bodies, like moments after death and stuff like that. And uh, that's all the ones that I can recall off the top of my head. If there's any more, be sure to do your research and Google any other triggers that go with this. But five stars. This was, this was, ugh. It amazed me. It like floored me. Like, I just could, I, I remember reading it and going, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? Like, like, if you haven't read this trilogy yet, I highly have to recommend that you do so. So five stars for this one. The next book that I read was my, um, was my snack read for Magic Kingdom, which was Dole Whip, and that was to read a book to favorite. And that was Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This came out last year and I desperately wanted to read it last year, but I never got around to it. Um, but I bought it for myself for my birthday this year and I obviously, and obviously read it this month. This was good. 
It was really, really good. I give it four stars in the end. It's basically about this um, this girl called Brie, and she has recently lost her mom in a in a really in a really tragic um, car accident, and you know she's dealing with like the grief and the uh, almost borderline PTSD um, repercussions of that. It's really sad. And she ends up going to North Carolina to this university to take part in um what what's it called? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> um oh yeah, it's like a residential program for high schoolers to go to this university in North Carolina. So uh yeah, her and her best friend they go. Her dad is reluctant to let her go, but um then she ends up going anyway. And then she kind of gets she ends up in like this secret society sort of thing. Like she sees this like, she sees a demon basically, this like hellhound thing. And she's like, what the heck? And then she's probably one of the only people that can see it. No one else can see it. And then, um, <laughs> and then obviously she gets saved from that. But then this uh, being called a Merlin tries to erase her memory from what she saw, but obviously it doesn't work. She still remembers. And it kind of goes from there. I really, really enjoyed my time reading this. Um, it dealt, it talked a lot about like grief and loss and how it can affect you, like your mental and emotional health and stuff like that. And like I said, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff like that over this past month. Um, and that really, really spoke to me. Um, the Arthurian legend side of it, that kind of felt like it took a back seat for a good part of this book, I won't lie. Um, it, cause then it, it talked a lot more about Brie and her family, her family history and a whole bunch of other stuff I don't want to say because it would be a spoiler, but the Arthurian legend side of it was really intriguing. I was a little bit confused as to the sort of intricacies of like the secret society and stuff like that. Um, cause there is, a, there's quite a lot of information thrown at you. But I mean, all in all, I had a really great time. I love this story and I'm so excited for the next book to come out. I recently saw the cover the other day of it on Twitter. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And Selwyn, Selwyn, Kane, Selwyn Emerus Kane is everything to me. And I'm, he, he's on the cover of the second one and it makes me so happy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really glad that I read this one. It's a good starter to a hopefully will be a wonderful series. I don't know how many books there's going to be, but this was a really, really good start. Okay. And then the last book that I read for Magic Kingdom was um, Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. And this was for my show read, <laughs> um, Happily Ever After. And what was the prompt for that? What was the prompt for that? I can't remember. Was it like read a retelling or something? I can't remember. I genuinely can't remember. My brain has just officially lost it, but I know this was like, this was my show read, but this is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. And it's kind of a Peter Pan-ish retelling because it is about Wendy and her two brothers, John and Michael. And one day they go out into these woods and Wendy is the only one to come back. John and Michael, have gone missing and we start off it's been five years john and michael have never been found and wendy cannot remember anything from that night and she's like reeling from it she's trying to remember she gets flashes of it she keeps drawing peter pan's face she keeps drawing a mysterious tree you want to know more about that you have to read it um all in all it wasn't my favorite that i've read it wasn't the glowing five stars that i thought it was going to be but um, I still had a really great time. I love Aidan Thomas's writing. I will literally read anything that they put out in the, uh, whatever they're doing in the near future. I'm 100% going to read it. Like it was a really, really fun time. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was fun. Wasn't wonderful. Um, I'll give it like a low four stars. Like I had a good time, but it wasn't like, you know, not the glowing five stars it was gonna be, like I said. Um, now for Epcot, <clears throat> as the month went on, <laughs> honestly guys, as this month went on, there were days when I just did not feel like reading. That's just the brunt of it. And I blatantly failed at life when it came to Epcot. So, um, but I did manage to complete one book for Epcot and that was Amari and the Night Brothers. This was my show read. This was, uh, Turtle Talk with Crush to read a middle grade. 
I read this really fast. Like, I amaze myself at how fast I read this book, but it's about this girl called Amari, and her brother has been missing for over six months. Everybody tells her that he's dead, but she doesn't believe that is the truth. She thinks that the organization that he worked for is behind it somehow, and then somebody from that organization gets in touch with her and basically says that her brother had recommended her to join them as well. So she immediately goes in and um, she uses that opportunity to try and find out what really happened to her brother. And it just really goes from there. This is a gorgeous book, isn't it? It's lovely. There's like sparkly edges. You cannot see them on camera. It's so annoying, but there's like sparkly silver edges. But like I said, I read it really, really fast. <laughs> like I started it on a Sunday and then by the Wednesday I was done. Um, but I mean, granted it is a middle grade, it's not that big, but still four stars for Amari. I had a really, really fun time. Um, I thought the story was really well done. I, I thought that everything about the Bureau was really interesting. I loved Amari as a character. Like I felt so bad for her whenever she walked in because she was constantly bullied by like these other kids at the Bureau. They were just so stuck up and just like, will you just go away, please? Um, but yeah. I had a really, really fun time. I'm super excited for the sequel. And yeah, four out of five stars for Amari. Now the next two. <laughs> is, uh, okay, well, I will say I also picked out Assassin's Apprentice to read for Epcot. Um, this was for Frozen to read a hyped up book. Um, it's, it's not so much a hyped up book as Robin Hobb is a hyped up author. I haven't finished it. As you can see, I don't have that much left. I'm on chapter 17 and there's 24 chapters in here, I think. Normally a book this long, I would have finished in no time, but it's quite dense and it's quite slow. And um, I am listening to it via audiobook, which is helping, but still, <laughs> no one told me how dense Robin Hobb was. It's cut, it almost feels like you're reading a history book a little bit, but um, I mean, it's interesting. It's about this young boy called Fid, Fitz, who is abandoned by his maternal grandfather on the steps of the castle, because he is the bastard son of one of the princes, but the prince has gone AWOL, they don't know where he is, so his grandfather's just like, I don't want to look him, I don't want to look after him anymore, your problem now, deuces, bye bye um, And then he's raised at this keep, and it's really just about him growing up. That's really, <laughs> really him growing up and you know discovering things about his father and just like learning just like learning about himself and who he is and what he can do that's pretty much it <laughs> it's all very political I will say all the political jargon goes off of my head but I am having a good time reading this I am going to finish it because I've gotten this far um, I want to be able to say that I completed a Robin Hobb book anyway in my life so I'm looking forward to finishing this I that spoiler alert for November and the last book I want to talk about, you will probably all line up the firing squad for this one, but uh, Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I DNF'd this. I DNF'd it. I could not be bothered anymore to read this book because it felt like I was trudging my way through it. It was all just sad and depressing and just, I'd had enough. I'd had enough my friends. So I DNF'd it and I cancelled my order for The Burning God, got my money back for that and I'm not going to go near this again. I'm not. Like nothing against R.F. Kuang, nothing against the series. I just could not be bothered anymore. <laughs> so that's that. It's going. So anyway, thank you for watching this very messy wrap up. My TBR will be up at the weekend. I hope you all had a better October than I did. Um, I really hope that November is just plain and boring and nothing at all happens. So yeah, I shall see you in my next video on Saturday. Bye.